After thinking about a hundred ways to break out of prison, Bob understood one thing. A jailbreak doesn't need a way that everyone can't think of. It just needs a way that anyone can think of but that anyone thinks is impossible. And that is to make a key late at night. Bob covered the door lock with a piece of paper, pressed out the outline of the lock hole, and then outlined it. He got the shape of the lock hole. Step 2. He rolled a piece of paper into the lock hole, pinching the end with his fingers, then inserting a pencil to squeeze the top and pulling out the paper, which will have to fold the length of the key. The third step is the tooth shape of the key. When eating, cellmates deliberately quarrel to attract the attention of the guards, and Bob will take the opportunity to peek at the guards' keys. When playing ball, Bob pretended to pick up the ball, but in fact, he was also looking at the key. When they were lined up, it was a good opportunity to observe, and before long, Bob could draw the shape of the keys from memory. Bob copied it several times based on new observations, and then compared the drawings copied each day. When Bob found that the drawing was almost the same, the tooth shape of the key reached perfection, and the next step was to make the key. What should it be made of? Wood. Prison inmates usually have to do carpentry in the workshop, which is a good opportunity for Bob to collect wood. Bob wanted to transport the wood this way, so he wrapped a few small strips of wood in sandpaper and tucked them into the bottom of his hot water bottle. Bob wanted to transport the wood this way. The problem was that every time he finished work, the guards would check the hot water bottle and knock twice to empty the coffee inside. When Bob's turn came, the guards noticed that he was extremely nervous and poured out all his coffee and shook it hard. But there was no sound of the bar shaking because Bob had stuffed a rag beforehand. During the night, Bob finally began to make the key. He used a knife to make a recess, sandpaper to sand it until smooth, sharpen the shank of the key, glued it with glue, then put it into the lampshade, heated it for a while, and finally carved out the teeth, sand it, sand it, and sand it again, and the memory of the key came out. When finished, Bob inserted the key into the lock hole and gently turned it, and the wooden key surprisingly smoothly drove the organ. The lock opened with a loud bang, but only for three seconds. Bob also stood in front of the door. Each cell has two doors. The other door is open from the outside. They are inside. How do they open the lock from the outside? They begin to think of ways. A partner who escaped from prison with them wanted to use the method of pulling the wire from the opposite side of the cell to pull the key over and into the lock hole. Bob listened for a second and vetoed it because this method has no way to turn the key. At this point, they realize that each cell has a mop and you can put the rod of the mop out of the cell window just to be able to reach the lock hole. Well, the next problem was how to turn the key. While Bob was working in the workshop, he saw a swivel, a hand cranked wheel axle. That gave him a flash of insight. Bob immediately began to make a simple spindle. Get a board, drill the holes, and then drill a hole in the top of the mop stick, using screws to combine the two. The key was fixed on the spindle, which was done. Bob reached the stick out of his cell window, slowly reached the lock hole of his cell door, inserted the key, and turned the spindle farther. There was another claim, and the second door opened. At this point, a patrolling prison guard in the distance to Bob's left came to a halt. Bob was afraid of being seen and continued to crouch. The wooden key fell to the ground accidentally. Bob heard the footsteps of the inspector. If the wooden key was found, Bob could never escape. Bob turned around and took out his gum, mixed it with his saliva, and stuck it on the top of the pole to hold his key. After several thrilling attempts, Bob finally glued the key and got it back with a subtle movement. After the second door is done, the biggest problem of the jailbreak is solved, and the next is just the other doors. But even though it has come to this point, people still do not believe them. Some people say that even if you get out of prison, wearing prison clothes in less than an hour will get you caught back there. Okay, then first get clothes. The prison will have new prisoners every once in a while, and as soon as they come in, they have to take off their clothes and change into prison clothes and the guards will throw these old clothes into a room, and Kerry will take advantage of this loophole, and when he's done working, he's all fat. Guess why Kerry suddenly gained weight? Because he wore other people's civilian clothes inside. Late at night on the 296th day, Bob and his companion decided to explore the road, this time, mainly to try the key. Bob used his memory to build a lot of keys, but he did not know which corresponded to which door. Bob quickly cracked open the cell corridor door, went down to the first floor, and the fourth door was just around the corner. This corridor has a duty room with a guard in it, which happens to be playing very loud music, and Bob tries the key. When Bob was finally right, and the sound of the guard's music stopped, Bob hurried to relock the lock. At this point, with the shadow of the prison guard gradually fading, they rushed to run. There was no time to run back into the cell. 
Fortunately, Bob has long had a key to the utility closet. They hid together in the miscellaneous locker, in the very narrow space that could barely fit them. The locker is impossible to unlock, and there is no pull handle. You can only use your fingertips to squeeze the tiny handle. The sound of the prison guard's footsteps approached his partner, who crossed his hands. I can only beg the guards not to find the hole, now that it is so obvious. The good thing is that the night is very dark. The guards did not see the dimly lit grocery locker. The door opened a crack. Bob went straight upstairs, and there was no danger. While the first floor was unguarded, Bob decided to continue. The penultimate key was correct after only one try, which was excellent luck. So there were only two left, and they could see the moonlight. Meanwhile, the guards were looking at their cells. Bob had already used the quilt wrapped in the shape of a human body in advance. Fooling the guards, at the last door, they tried a lot of keys, but did not try them right. There was no time left, and the guards' patrol time was over, so they had to retreat. And when they retreated, they needed to relock all the iron doors. So they ran wildly with all their might, and also with all their might to suppress the sound. When they entered the locker, the guards' leather shoes also stepped right on the steps above them. The warden, who had arrived after the prison bell had rung, woke Bob up the next morning. The warden realized Bob must have been awake in the middle of the night. So they began to raid the room, and everything Bob owned was violently thrown out. Bob hit many keys well, except for the one in the toothbrush cup, which happened to fall on the floor, and the warden slowly picked it up. Good thing Bob separated the key from the ruler's handle. The warden didn't see that it was a key and asked Bob what it was. Bob slowly picked it up, picked up a picture of Bob's parents, and tried to hold it with the key ruler, which was holding the picture. The warden believed the purpose of the raid. Bob did not discover anything, and Bob learned to hide the key from then on. The prison is full of hidden corners that can be given to Bob to hide the key. For example, in the library, the bottom of the bookshelves have slits that can be opened. Such is the bucket containing laundry detergent, which only prisoners used to wash clothes. No prison guards will look inside. For example, in the dirt of the prison garden, you can also bury the key. But in Bob's escape plan, there is a big problem. There is an electric door in the prison corridor and Bob has no way to use this door key. Remember Bob chewing gum every day. Bob chewed himself out of a cavity. The doctor said to do surgery to extract the tooth, then have a prison guard supervise Bob's release from prison for medical treatment. When passing through the electric door, Bob notices the original door switch, which is not far from the duty room, and uses it to entice the guard on duty to open the door when they escape. Walk out of the prison gate, Bob saw that the outer wall of the prison was building a new watchtower. There will be snipers standing here. They must leave before the end of the project. On jail day 404, Bob and his companions decided to get out that night. They invited everyone together, but Bob's cellmates were not willing to participate. At the end of the day, the guards talk and laugh away, leaving only one guard on duty. There was also a patrol guard on the high platform. Bob skillfully opened the door to the room and released his companions none of whom were dressed because the prison uniform was no longer needed. Taking out the civilian clothes they had hidden for a long time and putting them on. Meanwhile, the guards downstairs happened to be looking for something in the utility closet and there was a bunch of paper clips on the screws on the inside of the closet door which were knocked off by the guards although the guards didn't understand what the thing was for but it gave them a great deal of trouble. When the guards went into the restroom they hid in the miscellaneous locker and discovered that the paper clips on the screws were missing and they couldn't close the door smoothly. They didn't have to think about it, so they just pinched a tiny bit of the screw with their fingertips. What they didn't know was that the guard had gone to the bathroom and was about to return the items. And once he opened the door, it was inevitably a struggle and a close call. The inmates upstairs, who had not escaped, suddenly pulled open the lampshade and smashed the bulb inside, causing a short circuit. Bob gave up opening the grocery locker and went upstairs to solve the problem first after a prisoner. The prisoners and the guards became irritated. The team's diversionary tactics gave the escapees the opportunity to push their way out. Next, they smoothly opened several doors and also sneaked into the unguarded watch room and opened the electric door. They came to the last door. Through the door hole, they can already see the street scene outside. But the most critical problem is that this is a door they have never opened. Do not know which key is right and can only try one by one. As they tried time and again, their hearts also became nervous. The last key could not be opened after trying, and the door became their last nightmare. Bob collapsed. We can only go back. But Edward was not willing to pick up the chisel and smash. 
Bob ran back to try to stop it, but Bob saw that the door frame had broken and the door was about to open. So Bob decided to conquer his fear, waiting for the door to open after a few dancing long pops. They got dressed and started to walk out, using the mirror to watch the guards on the fence without being noticed. Taking advantage of the guards' turn, they dashed towards the prison gates, which were teeming with pedestrians, of which they soon became part.